Hi, this is Judith Karakshuni, Salman Alana, and Manos Prilakis, and this is case 207 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the importance of treating the donor vessel prior to going for the retrograde approach. The patient was an elderly woman who had multiple comorbidities and uh, had previous uh, ICD implantation and cardiomyopathy. In the past, she had uh, intermediate left main stenosis with normal IFR. EF was 34%. And uh, she was found to have inferior ischemia and was referred for PCI of a known CTO of the right coronary artery. However, when she came to the cath lab for PCI, her systemic pressure was 190 over 86 with an array of 19 millimeters mercury. So the patient was taken off the table and uh, the plan was to treat the hypertension first and then have the patient come back. So the following day, after the blood pressure was controlled, the patient returned for PCI of the right coronary artery CTO. We do see here that we have um, engagement of the left main with the safety wire. There is a CTO of the mid right coronary artery. And uh, there is a tapered proximal cap. The distal vessel is of uh, good quality. And there are both septal as well as epicardial collaterals going to the right coronary artery. So based on this, our plan was to start with undergrade wiring. And then if it didn't work, try to go retrograde through the septal branches and leave ADR as a third option. So here is undergrade wire escalation, turnpike LP, filter XTA. Did not make much progress. We then escalated to a stiffer guide wire. This is a Hornet 14 that went into an acute marginal branch. This emphasizes the importance of having an RDO view, orthogonal views, to make sure we understand the course of the guide wire and the vessel. That lesion ended up being balloon uncrossable. We couldn't get the microcaster through. Um, we couldn't get a 1.0 millimeter subfire balloon, even when we used uh, a guide extension for having extra support. So what we did next is a few passes with a 0.9 millimeter laser. And although the laser did not actually pass from the mid-right coronary artery, we were then able to advance the microcatheter and then we changed for a workhorse guide wire into the acute marginal branch. So now we have a side branch next to that cap. What we did is use a Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter and then use the Gaia second wire. And that wire, unfortunately, also went into a more distal acute marginal branch. So multiple attempts to redirect the guide wire to go in the distal RCA, but unfortunately, the wire kept on entering into the acute marginal branch. So at this point, we decided to switch to retrograde, but the patient had hypotension and hemodynamic changes when we engaged the left main. We decided to place an impeller, but could not actually get the impeller past that aortic bifurcation. We eventually used the longer impeller sheath, and that was able to go through that uh, distal calcified left main. And after we did that, we were then able to advance uh, the impeller all the way into the left ventricle. So sometimes the short impeller sheath may not be good enough, but the long impeller sheath can allow delivery of the impeller in the left ventricle. We did the intravascular ultrasound of the left system, and uh, what we found is that there was significant disease in the ostium of the left main. So we decided to stand the left main, we did uh, a stenting into the LAD, jailing the circumflex with the drag eluting stent, proximal optimization, and then uh, repeat uh, intravascular ultrasound. We see that the stent seems to be well expanded. Uh, it goes back and uh, essentially the stent extends all the way into the aorta. So now the patient was stable. I think this was partially because we extended the left main, but also because we have impeller support. And now we try to go retrograde. We still uh, use the Sasuke to enter into the septal branch and uh, helped us get into the branch. We did surfing, didn't work. Then we did uh, injection through a microcaster into the septal, and we see there's actually a nice connection going to the PDA. And then based on that, we were able to direct a SUO03 guide wire that successfully crossed from the septal all the way to the distal right coronary artery. 
We then were able to advance a caravel microcatheter all the way to the distal cap. We can see here that the length of the occlusion is relatively short. And then uh, we advanced a retrograde gladius mongo guide wire that seems to be knuckling and going into the extra plug space. So we have this situation here that the undergrade equipment, including the guide extensor, are in the true lumen, whereas the retrograde is in the extra plug space. And the way to solve this is to go with bigger balloons trying to create a, essentially a dissection in the proximal part of the vessel that can help connect with the retrograde guide wire. So after doing this with increasingly larger balloons, we were eventually able to advance the retrograde gladius mongo all the way into the guide extension and into the undergrade guide catheter. We inserted the retrograde caravel into the guide extension and then externalized an R350. We did multiple predilatations. We did IVUS that uh, showed um, eccentric calcification throughout the right coronary artery. And then stented the vessel with multiple drug eluting stents. Actually, having gone in the extra plug space helped us expand better than it would have otherwise. So we stented all the way to the proximal right coronary artery and uh, perform intravascular ultrasound. We can see that the vessel and the stent seem to be well expanded and uh, the stand also extends nearly all the way into the aorta. So this was a final picture on the left, showing no injury of the left system and a good result of the left main standing. And this is the final image of the right coronary artery, showing good undergrade flow into the RCA and the PDA. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that before going retrograde, if there is some disease into the donor vessel, we need to ensure that that is treated before going retrograde because advancing equipment through a tight stenosis can cause hemodynamic compromise. So in this case, we stented the left main and we also used hemodynamic support with an impeller. Then on the undergrade side, we had a balloon and crossable lesion that was treated using uh, sequential strategies. We used a small balloon, didn't work. We used a guide extension, didn't work. Eventually, we did use a 0.9 millimeter laser that did work. And finally, similar to many CTO-PCI cases, changing the strategy, sequentially changing from undergrade to retrograde, was critical to finding a solution and recanalizing the right coronary artery. Thank you.